This evening is a symphony of psalms, not a symphony of music, but of psalms. We are here to read, to pray, and sing adaptations from the book of Psalms. You have in your hands pages from Psalms of Grace that we're going to use tonight in our worship. Because for thousands of years, the book of Psalms has served as a hymnal for the people of Israel in their worship of God. And centuries before the appearance of Israel's final king, Christ Jesus, these Psalms were read, chanted, prayed, and sung as an expression of dependence upon God's sovereign hand. And this unique collection, formed over 900 years, has served to sustain God's people through defeat, desolation, oppression, war, famine, feast, humiliation, abandonment, deliverance, loneliness, captivity, peace, fear, and any other event or circumstance that can befall humanity. And after Christ's ministry on earth had ceased, the early church continued to sing these songs with a new understanding that the everlasting, omnipotent King of Israel was none other than the Messiah that they had bore witness to. So if you'll open up and turn to the words of Psalm 130 and begin reading them to yourself. And let's join together in prayer. Out of the depths we cry to you, O God. From the darkness of our sin and the innermost reaches of a desolate world, we cry to you. O God, hear our voice. May your ear be ever heedful of our pleadings. We know that within our souls that if you should regard the full extent of our iniquities, we could not dare approach you. But yet we are assured that with you there is forgiveness, forgiveness that knows no bounds or confinements. For we see it comes from an awesome and dreadful God who is still just and merciful in all his ways. So we hope, not with the hope that circumstances will suddenly by occasion turn to our advantage, but we hope in a sovereign who holds all power within his intentional grasp. And we hope in God and wait for his purposeful word. Our souls wait in a diligent vigil, surveying the horizon as the watchman does in anticipation of the dawn, when he is relieved that the darkness will conceal the threats no longer. We wait for Yahweh, for with him is found loving kindness and redemption. So from the depths we cry, and our hope is triumphant in Yahweh alone, for only he can redeem us from the recesses of evil. Only Yahweh can redeem us from our iniquities, and to him we cry in praise. Let's stand together. These words first appeared in the 1650 Scottish metrical psalter and they have been sung by believers for over 400 years sing together lord from the depths lord from the depths i
you may be seated. And we turn to Psalm 62. Listen to these words. Surely my soul waits in silence for God. From him is my salvation. Surely he is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be greatly shaken. How long will you assail a man that you may murder him, all of you, like a leaning wall, like a fence thrust down? Surely they have counseled to thrust him down from his high position. They find pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouth, but inwardly they curse. Selah. Surely, wait in silence for God, O my soul, for my hope is from him. Surely, he is my rock and my salvation, my stronghold. I shall not be shaken. On God, my salvation and my glory rest. The rock of my strength, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Selah. Surely men of low degree are merely vanity and men of rank are a lie. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath of vanity. Do not trust in oppression and do not put vain hope in robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart upon them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that strength belongs to God and that to you, O Lord, belongs loving kindness, for you repay a man according to his work. Let's join together singing, My Soul Will Wait. Would you stand together?
be seated. Psalm 23. It's been memorized and repeated by millions of souls, believers and unbelievers. Everyone recognizes the comfort from these words. Let's read together Psalm 23. Yahweh is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me. Let's stand together as we sing, surely goodness, surely mercy. Oh, 
singing psalms was not only an integral part of Protestant worship, but it impacted a particular group of Protestants, the French Huguenots. The French Huguenots built their religious practice and liturgy on the singing of psalms and began to collect metrical psalms and hymns into Psalters before Geneva Psalter by Calvin. They underwent tremendous persecution by the French state. And the most famous event of this was August 24th, 1572, called the Night of St. Bartholomew. The assault on Huguenot lives would claim thousands, commoners, nobles, political and military leaders in Paris and other major cities. And the way that the Huguenot dealt with this persecution was defiantly singing psalms. As they were led to their executions, they sang psalms. In 1524, the Protestant pastor Jean Leclerc sang verses from Psalm 115 as he walked to be burned to stake. After him, a whole line of French pastors continued singing the psalms. Regardless of whether they sang melodies invented on the spot or established tunes, they were all reported to have joyfully sung psalms before they were executed. You see, throughout history, kings and rulers have sought to establish their reign. They've sought to rule over Christians, over the church. Yet God laughs at that. He mocks their efforts. God is ruler of all. Christ is king, and he stands before us as we bow before him. Let's stand and read Psalm 2 together in unison. Why do the nations rage and the peoples meditate on a vain thing? The kings of the earth take their stand and the rulers take counsel together. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord mocks them. Then he sees to them in his anger and terrifies them in his fury, saying, But as for me, I have sold my king upon Zion, my holy mountain. I will surely tell of the decree of Yahweh. He said to me, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me. sing together those words to the tune of crown him with many crowns.
Psalm 34. Let me read the first 10 verses to you. I will bless Yahweh at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul will make its boast in Yahweh. The humble will hear it and rejoice. Oh, magnify Yahweh with me and let us exalt his name together. I inquired of Yahweh and he answered me and delivered me from all that I dread. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces will never be humiliated. This poor man called out and Yahweh heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of Yahweh encamps around those who fear him and rescue him. Oh, taste and see that Yahweh is good. How blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear Yahweh, you his saints, for there is no want to those who fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they who inquire of Yahweh shall not be in want of any good thing. Let's sing together. Taste and see.
God bless you and start singing the Psalms in church.